welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, today I think we're going to take a look at this puzzle, which appeared on a Facebook group that I'm a member of, um, and it's from the Indian puzzle constructor uh, Rishi Puri. Um, now, Rishi is, uh, as well as being a puzzle constructor, he's a very, very good solver. I think he was Indian Sudoku champion um, uh, 2014. And I think he was the Times uh, Sudoku champion in the UK as well. So serious uh, Sudoku pedigree. Um, and yeah, he said that the, he, this is a version of a puzzle that appeared on his website. Um, and he had to make it easier for his uh, website consumers. So uh, this is the hard version. <laughs> so we're going to try that and see how we get on. Um, now, it's normal Sudoku, this one, apart from these uh, grey circles. Um, the grey circles indicate that that has to be an odd digit that appears in that cell. And you can see it's a beautiful looking puzzle. Um, and yeah, I, I suspect it'll be reasonably challenging. Um, now if you want to have a go, do click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our web page where you should be able to play interactively on whatever device is your preference. And let's take a look at how I would solve this. Do I have any tips for odd Sudoku or even Sudoku? The sort of same principles apply for both. Um, I guess I have two tips. Yeah, the first is really obvious. So as I look at this puzzle, my eyes are drawn to this row and this box. And the reason is there are obviously five odd digits in any row column or box and in this box I know where all of those five odd digits go so uh, because of the three circles so the corollary of that is that all those squares must be even um, and similarly for this row obviously we've got the same sort of thing going on I've got three gray cells to add to the two odd digits that are given therefore these squares must be even digits so immediately we could look at this two and know that the two in the row in row four must be in one of those two squares. Um, so that's my first tip. My other tip for this sort of puzzle is actually, um, perhaps a little bit oddly, not to look at the odd digits at all really, but to focus on the even digits because they are going to be seriously restricted. Um, so let me just stare at this for a second. Yeah, okay, look, these fours, um, it's, not, it's not brilliant, but it is not brilliant at all. Let's look somewhere else. Um, these sixes, these sixes are better. So these sixes interact in the bottom right. And because of these two gray cells, which I know can't be sixes because they've got to be odd, actually I can place a six in the bottom corner. Uh, oh, and in fact, now a similar thing going on, we're gonna be able to place a six there as well. Um, and it's often that we find this with uh, this sort of puzzle, is actually focusing on the digits that, that aren't affected by the givens, if you like, these gray cells, uh, is, is gonna be the strategy we should be using. So with that, let's have a think about solving it more diligently. Um, so these sixes now, and the fact this can't be a six mean that we can pencil mark sixes at the top, pencil mark sixes there, twos can be pencil marked here because of this two, and obviously we can't have twos in the grey squares, twos down here, eights, look, eights there as well, so that gives us a two eight pair uh, in this bottom right hand box. Now I still need to put a four somewhere in this box and I know now that it must be in one of those two squares because it can't be grey and that's, that is useful because now that square must be a four and therefore that square must be a four and therefore that square must be a four. Oh, I thought we were going to get on a real run there but no, halted, foiled again. Um, ah, but we can continue with fours this way. Look, that's got to be a four. Ah, that's a four, that's a four, and that's a four. So in fact, we do get all the fours. Uh, good, okay, so again, 
Okay, there's a two here. This six, that's got to be a six in the center look because it's the only square that, once we eliminate these squares from being a six, I can't put any more sixes in the side squares, so this square would have to be the six. Must be a six in one of these two positions as well. One of these two positions. Uh, okay, so we've done sixes. We've, well, we've looked at sixes, we've done fours, we've started to look at twos, but maybe we can do more with twos. Let's have a look at twos. Where are twos in the grid? One thing you've got to be a bit careful about with this puzzle as well is that your your natural scanning for Sudoku goes a bit wrong because ordinarily you'd look at these two twos in the grid and just give up on them. You'd think, okay, well, I can do stuff in the bottom here, but I sh I'm not going to be able to do anything on the left-hand side uh, because there's just not enough restriction. But But obviously in this variation... That's not quite true, and indeed this two here actually gives us some pencil mark twos into those two squares. And now with that two, we actually get a bit more pencil marking done. I'm not sure how much further we can go though, so uh, we need to look at eights as well, don't we? So how many, let's see again here, there's only one eight in the grid. but we can still pencil mark some eights up there. And look at that. This eight is still useful in this top box because neither of these can be eights, therefore that can't be an eight. That gives us an eight here. Now this square must be an eight because this one can't be. In this central three by three box, we know the eight must be in the central column because it can't be an odd number, obviously. So now we get eights into those two squares. careful here so these squares can be eights uh, so here ah yeah there we go this eight as well means there's an eight in one of these two positions now we've now got the same number or two two cells containing pencil marks for two different digits, six and eight, and it's appearing in both of these squares. So this, these two squares are a six and eight pair. It's no longer possible for this one to be a two. If I try and put a two in this square, I've got to put a six and an eight in this one. That's clearly not gonna work. So this one is the two. Now this must be a two because it's the only position. Now that gives us the eight as well. This eight is gonna give us the eight and the six unwinding. That gives us a six here. You can see all of a sudden we've actually made a bit of progress. Um, which, oops, which might be grinding to a halt, but it was still nice while it lasted. This eight means, oops, this must be the eight here. Okay, now this two, we can pencil mark twos into one of these two squares because again, it can't be in either of those. And that gives us, that unwinds the two and the eight on this side. Now this must be a two. This is a two. And the eight must be in one of those squares. And once we reach this sort of impasse where we've done all of the eights but for these this pattern here, we know we've finished with the eights. There's no point looking at the eights now. They aren't going to resolve themselves. It's going to have to be another digit that interferes with this pattern in order to tell us which way round the eights go. Uh, let me just double check the twos now. Um, oh, in fact, this two is forcing a two into one of those squares, isn't it? So that gives us a two six pair at the top. That resolves that this is a two. Uh, 
Right, so what now? Maybe we should start pencil marking other digits into the grid and see what we can do. Um, maybe I'm going to have to finally resort to looking at odd numbers. I don't want to. Um, start doing it here. So the 7 must be in one of those squares. The 5 must be in one of these squares. Uh, ah, no, 3s. Look, these 3s do resolve that. That's a 3. That's a 5. That's a 7. So we pencil mark the 7s on this side. 5s into one of those two positions. 5s into one of these two squares. 5s into one of these two squares. Uh, ah, hang on, look, 5 here, 5 here. Where can a 5 go in this column? Well, it can't go here and it can't go here, so it can only go at the top there. Which means this is a 5. Ah, and here's a trick. Here's a trick we can do. So, have a look at that row. See if you can see something interesting about it. And the critical thing to realise is that Look, we've got a 2 and a 6 there in the column. Now, I've not put a 2 and a 6 in, in row 1 yet, so I've got to find a home for the 2 and the 6. But these three grey squares are very, very influential because they cannot take a 2 or a 6. So there's actually only three candidates for where the 2 and the 6 can go, and one of those squares is ruled out, this one. So that square has to be a 2 or a 6. And there's a two down there, so that that is nice. That gives us a bit more. Um, now, does it give us? Uh, this is a one five pair now. This nine now forces a nine down to the bottom. This seven means that must be a seven. That's a three. That must be a three. This must be a three. This must be a three. This must be one and nine in some order. So these squares must be one and five. These two must be 5 and 9. These two must be, there's a lot of pairs going on now, 1 and 7 I think into those two positions. That one's a 1 or a 9. <laughs> uh, sorry, you guys are probably seeing the break in here and I'm just being a bit slow about it, but hopefully I will get there. Um, 1, 5 here and here. Five. This is a one or a nine. This one. Oh, press the wrong button. One seven or nine. Bent bent triple there. Bent triple would allow us. Yes, it would. It would allow us to make more progress. But then I'm just going to have a quick more quick look at this. I'm sure. Sure, there will be an easier. Ah, uh, this three, yeah, that's going to be what I've missed, is it? So this is a three. So these are one, five, and seven. Uh, that can't be a six. I can't resolve the eights though, so. Um. Hmm. Well, let's talk about this anyway. That's what I've spotted. It's a bit. It's, I'm sure it's going to be too complicated for what was intended. But let, let's just work through this. Now, this is almost a Y wing. 
It's still a bent triple. You can see if these three squares were in the same column, we would have no difficulty from eliminating the numbers 1, 7 and 9 from the rest of the column. Now where they're bent like this, we need to take a bit more trouble. And perhaps the best way to think about this is let's imagine there was no 1 in this square. 1 was not an option and we had this arrangement. This is the classic Y-wing. And what this technique, what we could do if we had this pattern is we could say, well, let's look at this square. This square must be a 7 or a 9. And therefore, if it's a 7, this square is a 1. If it's a 9, this square is a 1. So we could eliminate 1 from any square that sees both this square and this square. And this one is the key one. That, that square cannot be a 1. Now, this, obviously, this isn't quite a classic Y-wing because this square, this sort of pivot square can also be a one in this instance. But the lovely thing here is that that doesn't affect the logic because we can say, well, either this square actually is a one, in which case I can eliminate this one, or if it's not a one, I have a Y wing, which will also allow me to eliminate the one from that square. So all of that means this square is definitely a five. Now I'm hoping that's going to crack the puzzle. Uh, because it's going to allow us to unwind this central block, that's for sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just see. I want to do this too quickly in case I miss something. Uh, this one can only be a five. So there's a five in these two squares. This one must be a one. Therefore, this one over here is a five. We've got ones in these two positions now. So we, this is the way we're going to open up the eights that we, we looked at before. Look, this one interferes with the pattern. So that gives us this as an eight and this as an eight as well. This one, see, I, I think we're done now. It looks like we've, we've finally understood what's going on. Nine here, seven here. That should be a seven. That should be a 1. That unwinds the 1 and the 5. That unwinds the 5 here. Oops. This should be a 7. That should be a 9. That should be a 9. That should be a 7. This is a 9. 9, 1. 1 here. I think all the digits are filled. Yes. So, lovely puzzle and a sting in the tail. Um, do let me know what I missed. I'm sure I missed something, probably just a single somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you thought about Rishi's puzzle. I thought it was great. And um, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.